All right, welcome back to part two, well, part three, really, of uh, part two of the video, but part three of this process of cooking corned beef and cabbage. Um, so if you watched earlier, you saw that I took the corned beef that I had been sitting overnight in the pickling uh, seasoning and the sugar, the brown sugar. I added that into my pot. Uh, I added that into my pot and I want to show you this. So here's the corned beef now. Now you see it shrunk down some. Okay. This is, and I want to show you this. It's kind of tender. It still needs a little bit, right? But it's kind of tender, which is great. And I'm still going to cook this uh, for a longer period of time. All right. But it's almost done. And this is the point now here where I want to add in my vegetables. Before I do that, I'm gonna, it's been sitting on this side for a while. I've been flipping it like every 30 minutes, okay? I'm gonna flip it over again, all right? I've added some more uh, Guinness and some more of the, whoops. <laughs> I try to see how it's starting to fall off though. Look at that. That's, that's when you know you have a beautiful corned beef going, right? When it just starts to fall off. And it's not 100% there yet, but it'll get there. And if you could smell it, oh my God, it smells so great. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I want to add in my vegetables. I've got my carrots, okay? Carrots are a big part of corned beef and cabbage. Uh, again, I'm going with the multicolored carrots only because I like to add a little bit of variety uh, to my meals. You don't have to, you can stick with just you know, regular carrots. Same thing with potatoes. You can stick with just uh, white potatoes, like the you know, the gold potatoes or the red potatoes. I'm using the mixture color of potatoes. Cabbage, though, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty set on just regular cabbage. Like I'm not into so much the red cabbage with this meal. All right, because that has a definite different flavor to it. Um, so I'm just going to stick with the cabbage. Now, the important thing is, I want to cook it, and that's why I'm glad I have this brand new Dutch oven. Again, thank you to my friends, the Fuentes family, for this Dutch oven. It is gorgeous. I'm cooking six pounds of, uh, sorry, well, five and a half pounds of corned beef right now. And again, look how much room I have, okay? This thing is great. So I can cook for a lot of people. So I'm going to take up, I'm going to keep it back there. So what I'm going to do here, and I leave my cabbage cores in for this part. All right, I'm not going to eat them, obviously. I'll cut them away later. But I kind of want the cabbage to stick together because I'm going to feed each person about a quarter of the cabbage. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick that around, okay, inside of there. It's beautiful, right? Look at that. Absolutely Go ahead and look, still plenty of room here, okay? I'm gonna go ahead at this time, I'm gonna take my carrots, I'm gonna put my carrots inside, all right? Now the reason I didn't add the additional water yet is I wanna make sure that I don't overfill it, all right? Because you, the last thing you want is it spilling over. And I got it on low heat, so it's not really gonna spill over that easily, but you wanna make sure there's plenty of room here. All right, so I got my, I got all that. I'm gonna take my potatoes. I'm gonna stick my potatoes inside. Okay. And I wanna cook it with the meat because what I wanna do here is I wanna make sure that the flavors carry through this meal. So many people I see I'm like, you know, I see so many people, they'll cook corned beef and cabbage. Alexa, stop timing. <laughs> she caught me just in time, right? Um, but there's so many people I see this, that cook corned beef and cabbage, and they cook their corned beef in one pot, and then they boil the vegetables in another pot. And that's just a no no, okay? Because you're not getting any flavor, really, in those vegetables. Now, if you're cooking a lot of corned beef, okay, which you can do, cook it up. You know, depending on the size of it, cook it up for 
you know, two and a half hours or whatever, take the gravy, all right, pour that into your other pot, and then fill this pot back up with uh, Guinness and, and broth and, and let it continue to cook. So that this way, the broth that you have in the other pot carries over that flavor. All right, because you're not going to cook the vegetable. This is only going to cook for about another maybe 40 minutes. I'm going to check on it, see how the potatoes are. Um, but let me go ahead. I'm going to add in uh, the remainder of this beef broth that I have. Okay, and I want to show you this. So I'm going to add in the remainder of this beef broth that I have. It comes almost to the top. And again, I'm going to be careful not to come all the way to the top, but I am going to add in a little bit of water to fill in the space. And I'm coming about an inch, inch and a half from the top here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a little salt on there. Okay. I know I always say no shaker, but I'm using my shaker. I'm going to put a little bit of white pepper on there right and this is the seasoning really for the vegetables okay. and I'm gonna put in a little bit of rosemary I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cover this up with my beautiful, look at that, my beautiful smithy cover there love that thing all right now oh, got a little pepper you gotta be careful with that pepper right it gets Dude. That's the thing about filming live. You make mistakes like get your nose and you have to sneeze. All right, so I'm going to let that sit for another 40 minutes. I'm going to check on it. I'm going to check on the meat, the corned beef, make sure that it's really falling apart. I'm going to check on the vegetables, make sure that they're tender to the touch. All right, and with the potatoes, what that means is if I press the fork into it, it doesn't break it apart, but it's soft. And the fork will make a dent in it. And the same thing with the cabbage and the carrots. All right, so that'll cook down for 40 more minutes. I'll check on it. If I need to leave it longer, I'll leave it a little bit longer. And that's basically the three stages of cooking corned beef and cabbage. I'll send you a picture later on so you see how it came out. Um, again, if you like my show, please make sure that you like, share, and follow. Um, you know, if there's something you want to see me cook, go ahead and reach out to me. To all my brothers and sisters out there, overseas, deploy, wherever you are, away from your families, know that we love you, we miss you, and we hope that you come home soon. And until next time, hoorah!